Welcome back, football fans, to a Europa League special here on oddalerts.com. What we're going to do is take a look at uh, the Europa League games that are being played tonight. We're going to put together a little bit of a double for the uh, first set of games, 5.45 UK time, and then we've got some games at 8pm as well. Porto, Manchester United, we'll focus on that one. But we've also got Rangers and Leon. Rangers hosting Leon. And what I'm looking at right now is the probability model which is uh, you know runs through odd alerts on many features and we can see for over over 1.5 goals um, 89% for Hoffenheim against Dynamo Kiev and 87% for Rangers versus Leon so hopefully some open games there so first what we're going to do is actually I'm going to show you something on X which is uh, a winner from Tuesday's video and I said this on Tuesday's video and I'll say it on this video if you want a video tomorrow all you've got to do is like, comment, share, subscribe. If we get 500 likes on this video, you'll see me again tomorrow. And I said that on Tuesday and this, you know, this happened, but, you know, we didn't hit the target and um, I'm a man of my word and, and principle. And if, if I'd have said that and then posted a video, you'd never be able to trust me again. Um, so well done if you got onto this. Really easy stuff. Arsenal 2-0, Dortmund 7, Celtic 1 and uh, PSV Sporting 1-1 uh, as well. The score or assist treble that we put on, two out of the three legs won. The only player that let us down was Jokerez. He didn't score or assist, and that was um, it was a fantastic treble, to be fair. He was very unlucky. Adiemi with a hat-trick, um, and we had him on, uh, I think it was 1.9 to score or assist. Fantastic stuff. What a player he looks like. So we'll jump back to the Europa League now, and we will start with Spurs away at... Ferran Kremros, they are, I, I know who they are, I just can't say their name, they're a very good Hungarian team, um, and uh, yeah, let's dig into this one. So if we look at the last 25 games, we can see uh, the goals, it's, it's pretty even to be fair, and actually the home team here, they've not conceded uh, that many goals at all, 24 goals, and uh, they've scored in the majority of games, as has Tottenham, of course, no nil-nils um, in that period of time, anywhere, home or away, for Spurs, so you expect goals whenever... And Postacoglu's team takes to the pitch. This is the record so far in the Europa League. Uh, they got through the qualification and then they lost their first game to Anderlecht. Um, and then in Hungary, they are smashing it at home. They hardly lose. They've not lost a game since February. And that was against Olympiakos um, in the Conference League, was that? Olympiakos won that competition. And uh, the most recent victory was against the team, another team that is very good in Hungary, in Pushkas, 3-0 as well. All goals coming in the second half. Now, I don't think this will be an easy game for Spurs. Don't get me wrong, they are favourites. I think the odds are 1.47 or something. Um, so they are expected to win um, and expected to rest players or expected to, to start younger players like Moore might get a chance, Bergbaum might start from the off. We'll see. Uh, Dragasan would have been playing this game, but he's obviously suspended, um, which is a shame for him because this is the competition that he would have certainly got his minutes in uh, with Van der Ven and, and Romero untouchable at the moment. Now, if you've watched any of my recent Premier League preview videos, you'll know that we talked about uh, Spurs before they played Man United and uh, Ange Postacoglu's record at that moment was five wins in the last 15 away games, conceding almost two goals per game as well. So they, they are due an improvement, uh, and the Man United game will certainly give them confidence. I think they can beat anybody on their day, Spurs, given that the way they play, but they will leave space um, for Ferran, Var Fer Ferran Cavarros as well. They'll leave space for any team, and I think this is a confident team uh, that will look to exploit that, exploit what will be a second string Tottenham team potentially we'll jump to corners now and just before I forget they've got Brighton away on Sunday so I think that's always important to check because it, it does make a difference you know as we saw in the Champions League when Arsenal and City were playing each other they both drew nil nil it was a bit you know it wasn't a hundred percent was it and and these early games you don't exactly have to win to qualify uh, in this new group format so we can see in terms of corners um, again if you've watched the Premier League preview videos you'll know that Tottenham are top of the pile for corners total corners in games and also corners received um, so and you can see it is quite drastic the difference here in terms of the last 25 games um, so with this knowledge that I have of Spurs, feel free to check this out for yourself as well. Let's jump to Bet365. 
So after looking at some of the corner markets, I'm going to go with Tottenham to have over two corners in the second half. And this is going to be the first leg of the treble. Um, I did, you know, total corners um, in terms of the game, Tottenham to have more, 1.33 which again, you know, it's, it's highly likely um, that they will. It's highly likely that they'll have a lot of the ball, but we'll see how this one pans out. Um, I think for this slip, for this certain pick, we want a tight first half. We, we want um, the home team to, to go for it in the first half or for it to be a bit cagey or for them to try and make it cagey because uh, then Tottenham might have to come out in the second half and apply themselves and, you know, to have two or more to, to have over two corners in the second half it is um, very very possible for Spurs let's say um, so that's what we're going to pick for this game um, and just a general prediction for me I can see this one ending in a 3-1 victory I could see Tottenham going behind at, at first um, if they are a little bit complacent or if they have rested and rotated and the team isn't quite in sync gaps in the midfield or something um, depending on who they rest again lineup dependent um, but yeah they'll come back because they've got the quality and 3-1 uh, victory for me just before we jump to the next game get your comments in hit like subscribe all that good stuff it really helps us uh, grow the channel and grow odd alerts as well get more people using the website because I do believe if you just even the the free version what I'm doing here everything I'm showing you right now I'm not using any filters there's no alerts being set yet um, all of that data that you've just seen me using is completely free and open and always will be, by the way, because I don't think any uh, uh, other sites lock stuff and blur stuff. And yeah, I, d I just don't feel comfortable doing that. So all of the, um, the corner data and the card data and the referee data and all that stuff there, all the results and the ease of access, it is all there for you. Um, link in the description to these games. So what game do we fancy next? We've got some interesting games here at Olympiacos um, Conference League Champions, was it, last year? Uh, Quarabag Malmo has got a high rating for over 1.5 goals. Sociedad haven't started the season too well. Let's take a quick look at this one. Um, from what I remember um, in recent times, they haven't started the season well at all, but they bounced back with a 3-0 home victory over Valencia, who are 18 for themselves, to be fair, in La Liga. So, interesting one to call, but just look at how many games have not ended with over 2.5 goals there. Anderlecht, how are they doing again? So many draws in this in these two teams' uh, recent history. Away from home, Anderlecht uh, struggling at the moment. I'm not feeling this one, to be honest. I just wanted to check uh, Sociedad's form, but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be comfortable on that unless I was going under four goals. But remember, we're putting together a treble and we've already got one selection here at 1.5. So if we're aiming for odds of around 3.5, 4, um, let's see what we can find. We'll take a look at this Olympiacos game as well then because the odds did entice me a bit there. Over evens for a victory. And if you look at their home form, they've lost just once, which was a friendly to Nottingham Forest. Uh, they score two or more in the majority of their home games, Sporting Braga away from home. Very, very good as well, to be fair. So, again, it's just key to just dig into the results a little bit and um, see what you can find. Let's take a look at cards, shall we? And we can look at the referee here. So, if we look at his Conference League data from last season, three appearances. And if we look at the cards by half, one card could be yellow or red, this one, um, in the first half. And 18 in the second half so that is a remarkable difference really and it's only three games uh, but again if we go to his combined form you can see that there is a similar difference really 1.771 cards per first half against 3.32 cards per, for, per first half that's difficult to say more difficult than it should be take a quick look at the card stats uh, Olympiacos are receiving a card in 81% of all games across the last 25 games uh, their opponents are receiving cards in 88% of the games. Um, and again, not many first half cards compared to second half cards, 2.59, 2.81. So this is where I'm gravitating towards. You've got to just let the data guide you, haven't you? And it's, you know, you get out what you put in and, in this game and um, you've got to just do the research. You've got to be able to have the patience to just check and also have the discipline and experience to know uh, and not force anything. If you if you don't see something or if you're not pulled into any certain section, then it's okay to skip it. So Olympiacos versus Braga, both teams to receive a card 1.12. Let's not do that. Uh, let's look at the second half. Oh, for one card, 1.16. 1. What? 
So Braga to receive a second half card, 1.28 seems too low for me. For them to receive over one card in the second half is over evens. Um, if we put this to 1.28, it gets us to 1.92. If we remove that and uh, just go for both teams to get a card, 1.16 is too low for me. I'm sorry. Let me know what you think about that one in the comments. But I'm going to go for Braga to get a card in the second half, 1.28, which gets us up to 1.92. Let's move on to the next game. The next game we're going to check out is Galatasaray, who won their opening game. And uh, for Rigas, they are a Latvian team, aren't they? This is their fifth game of the competition. What we'll do is take a look at the last 25 games and see that Rigas actually scoring, outscoring uh, Galatasaray. I'm not sure that'll be the case tonight. But of course, this is what I like about the Europa League and the Champions League um, and the Conference League. More so the Europa League and the Conference League because of the sort of teams that it, that it throws together. Um, you get these matchups where you've got a team like like the guys that are playing Tottenham, like Rigas as well, where they are confident because of this. This is their home record. So in front of those fans, they, they expect goals all the time, don't they? And um, you can see they scored against Bodo's, Bodo Glimt, which uh, that's, that's a good sign. Um, but just look at this home form. They are superb. They are absolutely superb at home. And uh, Galatasaray come into town that's that's going to be an exciting game isn't it away from home <laughs> three five two 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 three 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 four wow Galatasaray away from home scoring for fun they beat Fenerbahce in the last away game 2-1 that's always a bloody big game uh, I've not done this yet on this video let's take a look at the probability model you can see the away win 1.94 over 2.5 goals 61.99 percent which as uh Implied odds 1.61. I'm going to put that on as a prediction here on the Odd Alerts Predictions game. And let's just check out the rankings here actually at the moment in game week 83. Ronnie, that's a new name at the top of the table. He's made all 28 predictions though. 27 for Tinga. Um, who's not made all their predictions? James. James uh, with 26 points so far, but seven predictions to go. So that's quite interesting, isn't it? And um, let's now take a look at the odds for this game because I mean goals seem to be where it's at for this one let's take a look at the timing data actually and look at it um, split by home and away so you can see Rigas really are dominant 73% of games won by half time they've scored 1.6 uh, first half goals per game uh, across that period of time and uh, not conceding many goals as well this is you hope that when two of these teams come together that um, have these brilliant defensive records and are just so good, you hope that you get a, a great game rather than a cagey game. And again, that's you, you, nobody knows for sure which type of game you're going to get, but you have to make that prediction. You have to have that kind of feeling. And um, hopefully for this one, look at that as well, by the way. BTTS in the second half, 70% for Galatasaray. So... Again, you, you, you know that there's going to be goals or that's your, the, the thing that the data tells you and then you can dig in deeper to these kind of sections and maybe formulate a, 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 a less riskier um, alternative to over 2.5 goals, let's say, to maybe just a goal in the second half for Galatasaray. Um, BTT has 70%. And uh, I did notice as well, actually, if we just look at um, BTTS in general, um, it's 80% across this period of time. Um, away from home. Scored in every game, both of these teams. No nil-nils. Um, clean sheet in just 20% of games. So Galatasaray, they are fantastic at scoring goals, but defensively conceding 1.5 per game. But I, yeah, a BTTS uh, in, this, in the recent run for Galatasaray. Let's just take a look again. One, two, three, four. In the last four games, 8-3 they had um, in this game. 5-1. 3 2, 1 2, 2 1, and away from home as we were looking. BTTS in the last 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Seven games. So, what are you thinking about this game? Let us all know in the comments. If you've got any uh, predictions for the other games at 5.45, let us all know. And now I'm going to jump to Bet365 and complete the 7.45 treble. 5.45 treble. So here we are on Bet365 then. Ossimene Cardi, Batsuai, Mertens. No wonder they are scoring for fun. Um, BTTS in the second half, 3.25. It has, of course, landed in 70% of those away games across that last 25 chunk. And uh, total goals, second half here, over one goal. So you could, you know, it could be two goals for Galatasaray, 1.66. What do you think about that? I, I was thinking of maybe a Galatasaray goal in the second half 
takes us to 1.25. And if we add that, we can just see potential 2.41. We were aiming for sort of threes, 3.5, weren't we? So um, over 2.5 goals in general for this game um, is 1.44. So again, it's going to get us around the same area. Um, the home team, of course, do like to score in the first half. Both teams to score... Let's have a look at that. Both teams score 1.75. It is a bit riskier, but it does get us to our target odds, doesn't it, of around 3.37. And given what we've seen, it does feel like it can happen, of course. I mean, we've just... BTTS in the second half alone has happened in 70% of those away games for Galatasaray. They are conceding a lot of goals at the moment. But what you have to think about when you're looking at Europa League ties and teams from different leagues is where that that level is between them because Galatasaray are obviously the better team. If Galatasaray were in Riga's league, they would absolutely walk it. They would be champions by Christmas. There's no doubt about that. So um, the first half of these games is always quite interesting and um, it, it depends how the home team plays because they can go for it and sometimes that shocks teams like Galatasaray and they can go a goal behind or they go for it and they just, they're a bit naive, they leave space and Galatasaray are tuning up before you know it. You know, it can happen. Um, so, yeah, interesting to watch this one, first 10, 15 minutes. And uh, that completes the 5.45 treble. Let me know what you think about this one. Over two corners in the second half for Spurs. Olympiacos um, to see Braga getting a card in the second half, 1.28. Low odds, I know. Um, and then BTTS in Rigas versus Galatasaray. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. And hopefully the next video... If it's tomorrow, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, 500 likes, and you get a video on Friday. Um, hopefully the next video starts like this again, and we're showing you what we've just put back. So what I'm going to do next is look at the Man United game, give some thoughts on Man United, and also put together a bet builder just for that game, okay? So we're going to put together a bet builder just for Man United. Let's go. So for this one, we are going to start with the player props tool. We're going to go to Manchester United, Porto against Manchester United, so we can see... Who's doing what? Uh, Bruno Fernandes, incidentally, has had his red card taken away um, from uh, the Tottenham game. It's been rescinded. So let's look at the last 10 games, see how the players are playing in this new season. And Ethan Wheatley, um, four starts. I don't know if he's on loan or he's come back or what. Uh, Nicholas Gonzalez, uh, Wenderson Galeno. I need to fix that. He, he plays as a sort of wing back, but he does play on the wing sometimes. But he's obviously, he, he's very far forward because uh, if we just take a look at total shots, I think he is top of the pile. Let's look at shots on target. Um, yeah, he is Wenderson Galano, 13 shots in his last nine starts. Hoyland, nine nine. Uh, shots in his last 10 starts as well Bruno Fernandes who desperately I think needs a goal Mason Mount apparently has another knock um, Samuel Omeridion who almost went to Chelsea has been scoring six goals in his last nine you can see here he is scoring goals by the way uh, one two three four five in his last five that's interesting and very good to know isn't it he had six shots against Aruka um, and uh, four against Bodo Glimt as well, which they lost. Um, and, uh, of course, the team news is going to be interesting for this one, but you expect the big hitters to start for Manchester United. You expect them to maybe play on the counter, so you'd expect Rashford, uh, Dallow potentially. Uh, sorry, um, not Dallow, Ahmad. I always get them mixed up. And, um, yeah, Hoyland potentially, I think, on with his pace, if he's fit. Let's jump to Bet365. Now, this is a huge game for Ten Hag. They've got Aston Villa on Sunday as well. So this game is just monumental for him. And um, I'm I'm really feeling BTTS, but at the same time, I think he could potentially just set up his team to not lose, to not concede space, to, to just make sure they do not get battered like they did against Spurs. And that first half, they're going to have to go for it or they're going to have to at least show something to the Man United fans that says, look, we acknowledge how bad we were in that first 45 um, and this is our reaction, let's say. Team news will be interesting, given the, the Villa game, of course. Hoyland, I think, could start. I think he could start with his pace, um, and that's not to say that he's going to score or anything, but we saw that he's taking shots on target when he does play. Hoyland to have a single shot on target, 1.5. 
Rashford 1.72. I do fancy that a little bit more if he starts. Of course, it'll be void if he doesn't. Now, the reason I've just gone for Rashford is Hoyland, it's not guaranteed that he will actually start given that he's just come back from injury. But I think in terms of this game, the way they need to play, I actually believe Hoyland, if he was fit, will start 100% because he's got that pace in behind. Whereas Xerxes doesn't seem to have it. He's, he's quite a slow, sluggish player. Maybe he's just getting up to speed, but he offers good things on the ball, don't get me wrong. Um, but you have to play a certain way and you have to, the pace comes from the wingers when Xerxes plays. He holds them up, he brings them in. Um, so Rashford to have a shot on target, I think that's not the worst option in the world. Let's have a look at average fouls, shall we, on the player props tool. You can check this out on Odd Alerts, by the way. Just go to oddalerts.com slash um, app slash player props or just go to the homepage and it's there. You'll see a link. So in the last 10 games, Zaydu Sansui, Sanusi has committed 2.2 fouls in his last nine games. Nicholas Gonzalez in the middle as well, 1.9. There's a lot of fouls here. Agate, if he starts the way he's playing, he does love to commit a foul. So actually... I think, again, in, in this game, uh, Porto are a good team. They're not. It's not going to be an easy game for Man United. I know I've said that before. So Sansui uh, is not even listed. No surprise there. Uh, Gonzalez, Nicholas Gonzalez, is listed, and he is marginally better than um, Agate. So we're going to go with him, Nico Gonzalez, over 0.5 fouls committed. We've got a shot on target for Marcus Rashford. Let me know what you're thinking about this one, by the way. Let me know what your predictions are for this game. And um, we will go with a goalkeeper save for Onana. No, we won't because the odds are terrible, but I do think he'll make a couple of saves at least. Let's take a quick look at the data for this one as well so we can formulate a bit of a, an image in our mind around Porto. Uh, in terms of second half goals scored, 71% when they play at home across the last 25 and uh, in terms of conceding in the second half, Man United 64% compared to 29% for Porto. Um, a goal in the first 15 minutes, very low. Conceded after 70 minutes, 57% away from home for Manchester United. Their second half um, data is not very good, is it? But in more recent times, their first half data has been terrible. I mean, in the first half against Spurs, who were absolutely woeful. Uh, they brought it back a little bit, didn't they, in terms of the performance. These are the results recently for Porto. Um, they win most of their games, don't they, in Portugal? It's as simple as that. For Manchester United, yeah, that's that's what you're looking at at the minute. Away from home, it's just not great, is it? I mean, I, I don't see how Ten Hag keeps his job. Let me know what you think in the comments about that, but... Just long term, it's just not great, is it? They'll go through little patches like this. But look at this patch. This is a, a this is a patch of wins. Wigan, Newport, Wolves, Villa, fair enough, Luton, Forest. And then they play some real teams and they get beat. And then it's, it's just mental. Um, and of course, 3-0 to Tottenham. If they lose this game and if they lose uh, a Villa as well, at the weekend, I think Ten Hag is as good as gone. So in terms of cards, and again, we're looking at home and away here, we can see the opponents actually get booked 3.36 time, uh, times on average per game when playing at Porto. So that says they've got some tricky players, they've got some very skillful players, they, they, they try and get in behind you. Uh, quite a few first half cards as well. So I am going to add over one cards to this bet builder for Manchester United. And again, I'm, I'm happy with this at the minute, but I know for the purpose of the video and the purpose of you guys, I, I think BTCS could be added to it. But I must say, I'll say it right now on the video, I'm. it's not like I'm 100% confident in BTTS because I'm, I'm not confident in Manchester United's ability to score goals. Let's just look at their um, recent form and you'll see exactly why. One goal in the last three games, and that came to FC Twente. But what, what I will say is they are conceding terrible goals. Another option here, potentially, is just Porto to score. Um, to just take the, 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 a bit of risk away. Um, if, if Man United go on to win this 2-1, well done. You could have had BTTS, but just eliminate some of the risk. Um, Porto to get a goal over one card from Man United. Gonzalez to make a foul, and Rashford to have a shot on target. 3.4. I am happy with that. What about you? So that is it for the video. Let me know what you want to see on tomorrow's video. Do you want to see trends, value bets, uh, player props again? I want to do uh, a Premier League section, of course. Premier League bet builders. EFL treble is something that we like to do every weekend. And if you want a video, remember, hit like, hit subscribe, hit comment. And I will see you, hopefully, tomorrow.